Okay, part B of problem number eight asks you to find the limit of this function as x approaches two. So the limit as x approaches two for this function, and I'm just gonna write f of x instead of writing the whole equation, um, this limit can be found by looking at the graph. So if I look when x approaches two, it appears to be approaching a y value of three, so my limit is three. Part C asks us to calculate the maximum delta for the given value of epsilon. And that means if we stay 0.5 away from the limit, meaning between 3.5 and 2.5, the question is how far will that be from two? And rather than just look at the graph and guess, we're actually going to calculate that. So we need to know what values will keep our function between or within 2.5 and 3.5 for y values. So we can set this up and we're gonna solve this algebraically by, when we look at the graph, here's the point where we're taking the limit. It appears that this is a point of symmetry, either rotational symmetry or um, line symmetry of some sort, but I believe that the distance that this is from two on the right side is going to be the same as the distance this is from two on the left side. So it doesn't matter which of these I solve, and so I'm just going to go ahead and solve this half of our inequality because both of these equations would give the same result for a delta value. So I'm going to find out what makes our equation equal 3.5 and that's going to tell me how far away I can be from 2 what my delta value is. First I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And then to get rid of the third power, I'm going to take the cube root. And then I'm going to add two to both sides. And you can go ahead and get a decimal for this if you want. The question is, what's delta? And delta on our graph, delta represents how far away we can be from two. So this is an x value. If we want to find a delta value for this, I need to know then how far is this answer from two? And I can just subtract two to find that, and that's going to tell me delta in this case, delta is the cube root of a half. Now while part C asked us to calculate a delta for a certain value of epsilon, part D wants us to calculate what delta is in general terms for any epsilon. So I'm going to look at how I set up part C and let that help me set up part D. These values here that I do wanted to stay between, that I wanted to keep my function between, were found by taking the limit and subtracting the epsilon value of 0.5, or in this case, adding the epsilon value to the limit. Okay, So that's how I'm going to write my inequality for part D. I want to keep my equation between whatever the limit is that I found in part D plus, oops, excuse me, not plus, minus epsilon, and the limit I calculated in part B plus epsilon. And now to solve that, again, 
since the delta values are even on both sides, I can just pick one side of this inequality to work with. So I'm only going to work with the uh, right side. And I'm going to solve this for x and use that to find my delta value. So I'm only going to solve the right side of this equation. And first I'm going to subtract 3. And then to get rid of the third power, I'm going to take the cube root. And then I'm going to add 2. And this is the x value. Now uh, what I am supposed to find though is delta. The delta value is how far is this x value from 2, where I'm trying to evaluate the limit. So I'm going to take 2 away from this answer to find delta. In this case, delta is the cube root of epsilon. And you should look back at part c to see if that makes sense. And in part c, we had found that delta was the cube root of 0 0.5 when we were given an epsilon answer or an epsilon value of 0 0.5. So that makes sense.